Hello there everyone, Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com and welcome to Getting Sketchy Live. It's been a couple of weeks since I've been able to do this, so I'm excited to get back to it. I know a lot of you have reached out to me and told me how much you enjoy these little challenges, and they're not really little challenges, they're kind of like big challenges within a small amount of time. What Getting Sketchy is, is we try to create a quick sketch, a quick drawing within a time frame, a, a timed, um, a timed space. <laughs> it's just 30 minutes. Um, and we're going to try to create a, a sketch as complete as possible within those 30 minutes. Now, of course, this is meant to improve our drawing skills and uh, it's meant to be a little bit fun. So we should ha loosen up and have a good time. If you're interested in this kind of thing where you're getting live instruction um, with drawing and painting, then I encourage you to check out our membership program over at thevirtualinstructor.com. You just go to thevirtualinstructor.com forward slash members and you can learn more about our program. We do weekly live lessons which are an hour long each week but we do uh, we go a lot more in depth and we do drawing and painting, um, colored pencils, pastels, pen and ink, so on and we also have video courses on drawing and painting which include video instruction as well as ebooks. There's also weekly critiques. There's a year-long curriculum for visual arts teachers. There's a lot of stuff over there. So if you like this kind of thing, I encourage you to go check it out. Tonight, we are going to be drawing a soccer player. Um, and that sounds really challenging, but we're drawing a soccer player because we're a football player if you're in any other part of the world other than the United States. But the reason why we're doing that, of course, is because the World Cup is going on right now. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to do something timely for a change. So that's what we're gonna be doing tonight. It's gonna be a challenge, especially since we only have 30 minutes but again this is a quick sketch so we're not going to get too too overly concerned with the details but hopefully tonight I'll show you some things about how you can structure your drawing especially a figure drawing that will help you uh, capture or get better accuracy in your own figure drawings in the future so if you're if you're joining here on the, on YouTube tonight, I want to welcome everybody. I'll do my best to look at the chat box, but I'll be honest with you, I'm going to be uh, having my head down for most of this most of the evening. I'll try to come back to the chat box at the end. Oh, and that reminds me as I'm reading some of the comments there at the end of tonight's broadcast. Um, I will show you what we're working on right now for our live lesson series. We're doing a more refined drawing. We've just done one lesson in, the ser in this new series, but it might be interesting to take a look. So um, let's go ahead and switch over to the main camera and uh, have a look at the reference that we're going to be working from. Here's the reference that we're working from over here on the left. And I have my copy right here because I can't see that in front of me. Um, this is just some random dude, random <laughs> soccer player. Um, he is a real guy, of course, but I don't, I don't think he's a famous soccer player or anything like that, or football player. Um, and it's going to be present a couple of challenges for us. We've got some foreshortening going on there. We've got some strong contrast between the shadows. We'll add as much information as far as the shadows and the value um, as we possibly can in the amount of time that we have. But we're going to be mainly focusing on the structure of the figure. You can see the timer up here in the corner. Um, I'll reset that in just a minute so there's no real worry about that <laughs> at this point in time. Um, but might want to keep the camera rolling there. So the camera just died there and that's because I did not have it set up properly. So there you go. Now it's set up properly. Um, yeah. <laughs> We're all back and good now. Um, anyway, I'm going to be using a uh, 2B graphite pencil for this drawing. This is just a mechanical pencil and I have 2B graphite inside of it. I'm not going to be using blending stumps or anything like that. I've got a kneaded eraser in case I, I make a mistake. Um, what we're going to be or need to clean up the drawing. What we're going to be doing here is we're going to just bake basically break down the structure of the figure uh, by first drawing a line from the head to the feet. And that's going to ensure that we get the entire figure within the picture plane. A lot of times folks will start a drawing, they'll start with the head, and then by the time they get down to the feet, uh, they're all the way off the paper, or uh, they make it about this big uh, in comparison to the rest of the paper. So uh, we want to make sure that we get the majority, of the entire figure on the picture uh, plane. So that's why we're going to start with a line from the head to the feet. I'm probably not going to draw it to take up the entire sheet of paper because of the time constraint. So I'll probably draw it a little bit smaller, but I am going to start with a line from the head to the feet. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line for the shoulders and a line for the waist. And we can see in this particular image that um, the shoulders are at a slight diagonal. 
You see that line right there? And the waist <clears throat> is somewhat at a slight diagonal too. So we'll pay attention to this diagonal and this diagonal when we draw the figure. And also, I forgot to mention, with the line from the head to the feet, there's gonna be a slight diagonal going on here as well. Then from there, I'm just gonna draw basically the bone structure. So um, it's kind of like drawing a stick figure. Since I'll have the lines for the shoulders and the lines for the waist, I'll just draw a line for the upper part of the arm, the lower part of the arm, and then a shape for the hand a line for the back of the arm, and a line for the front of the arm, and then a shape for the hand, um, a shape for the head, and then again, the same thing with the bottom portion of the body. Then lastly, we'll thicken things up, which is what I like to call putting meat on the bones. So we'll put meat on the bones at the end after we've got the structure in place. So I think we're about ready to go. Let me swing the big mic around here and get it into place. And then I'll reset the timer and we'll go right into this one. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit closer here so uh, <clears throat> you can see what I'm doing a little bit better since I'm not going to fill up the entire sheet of the paper. I'm probably gonna keep the figure in about this frame right here. And you'll have the photo reference up so you can make comparisons. It's not gonna be perfect. It's not gonna be a perfect uh, copy of what we're looking at, but that's okay. All right, I think we're ready to go. So let's refresh the timer and get started started here and let's go there we go 30 minutes so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my arm moving for one thing and I'm going to draw a line from the top of the head to the bottom of the feet again this is just so I can get the entire figure in the picture plane then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start drawing the line for the shoulders and the line for the waist and this type of drawing that I'm doing here initially is kind of like a form of gesture drawing. Okay, so we're drawing loosely, trying to keep our hand moving. Uh, we're not worrying about all the refined contour lines or anything like that right now. We're just trying to get the basic figure in place. Uh, so now I'm gonna go ahead and draw that stick figure. And as I do so, I just kind of naturally start to thicken things up a little bit. So this is the line for the upper part portion of the arm and then the lower portion of this arm. And I'm making comparisons with where it lines up with the waist. So I'm gonna have this hand kind of come out a little bit like this, and I'm gonna draw just a really loose shape for the hand. That kind of resembles the shape of the hand. And then over here, we've got the shoulder that is about right here. And then the upper part of the arm. The lower part of the arm comes across and right about in the middle of the body here. And then we're just gonna draw another shape for the hand. It's kind of a squarish shape here that I see. Okay, so just like that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and draw lines for the bottom portion of the body, the bottom legs. So here's our waist area. And uh, we're gonna bring this knee down to about right here. And it, we've got some foreshortening going on. So that means the back part of the leg is receding away from the viewer. And then we've got the foot, and this dude's got some big feet here. So we're going to kind of draw a shape for the foot. Again, keeping it very, very loose there. You can see how loose that is. We want to kind of get the action of the figure in the drawing. So if we need to, uh, you can see how far that knee comes down. Goes down pretty far. Got about the middle part of the foot over here. So I'm making comparisons with the bot with this foot. You can see the middle part of the foot over there. So we're gonna bring the knee down to about right there. And then the back part of the leg kind of goes back behind. And this is about where we're gonna have the ball. All right, let's go back up and draw the shape for the head. And then we'll start thickening things up here. So we're gonna to try to get this entire sketch done in 30 minutes. Um, and right now, this is the, the quickest part of the drawing. You know, we're, we're just planning everything out and drawing very, very loosely here. Trying to keep my arm moving the entire time. Okay, so here's the nose. This is about where the eyes are gonna be. And I'm, I'm letting the side of my pencil do some of the work for me here. So I'm not worried about using the tip of the, the very tip of the pencil. And we can get more refined with the tip of the pencil in a minute once we've got kind of the basic structure in place. 
Still going to keep things rather loose. Okay. All right, now let's go ahead and start thickening things up a little bit. And this is where I'm going to start thinking about the actual thickness of the body here. So uh, I can see the side of the head right here, and this is where the shoulder kind of comes up. And then back down. And then the clothing kind of wraps around. And the arm kind of comes out like this. And as I become more confident with the marks that I have in place, I might get a little bit darker with the strokes that I make. Still really, really loose here. And then the upper part of the arm here. And then we can see the bottom part kind of comes out, comes down a little bit, and then over. Like that. Let's let's zoom in a little bit closer here, so we can try to get these guys to be about the same size. Let's see here, without covering up his head too much. <laughs> try to get it as close as possible. Um, again, if you're seeing inconsistencies, that's good because you're always going to see inconsistencies, um, especially with a, a quick drawing like this. But it's good to identify them as I'm creating this drawing because it will help you when you create drawings to identify those inconsistencies too because you're making comparisons between the reference and the drawing that I'm creating. Okay, so we got a little bit of shadow right here. I'm just planning out where it is, where it's located. And then we got a little bit of a shadow on the forearm here too. Just getting an idea of where it's located. We can come back and refine it in a minute. But we're just thinking about the shadows as basically shapes. Or we will once we get to that stage of the drawing, if we get to that stage. Okay, now right here on the back of the arm, we have the shirt that comes down. And he's kind of wearing his shorts a little bit lower. So we're gonna go a little bit lower underneath the line that we drew for the waist. And I should point out here, as I do every time I do one of these Getting Sketchy episodes, is, um, you know, we're drawing very quickly and very loosely here. We're creating a sketch. Uh, this is not how a, a finished and more refined drawing is created. <laughs> um, so if you, if, you have if you struggle with this kind of thing, that's okay. Um, creating a finished, more refined drawing um, can take many, 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 many hours. Some, and a lot of times people just don't want to put that type of time into it, and they get frustrated when um, they're not happy with the results that they, that they uh, get with a quicker drawing. So, uh, you know, don't be afraid to put time into your drawings. Of course, uh, I'm talking about that as we're creating this quick sketch, but um, I should point that out. Sketching, of course, is still working the same art muscles, if you will, than if you created a more refined and more finished drawing, though. We're still looking at the subjects that we draw. We're still analyzing and trying to figure out how to position the lines, shapes, and values, and all the things that we see in a drawing. All basically the elements of art. Line, shape, value, color, texture, space. And it's how these things are organized on a drawing surface or in a painting. And that's what creates the illusion that we create in a drawing or painting. Okay, so I'm putting a little indication of the pattern over here. If we have time, we'll go back and darken up the values here. Still going rather quickly here. We've only... I've been working on this drawing for about nine minutes, believe it or not. And really, if you if you start your drawings of that include a figure with the line from the head to the feet, and then uh, drawing that stick figure, 
it's not really a stick figure it's kind of defining the bone structure but it makes it a whole lot easier if you think of it as a stick figure <laughs> i can't tell you how many people i've heard say i can't even draw a stick figure and uh, you can draw a stick figure. <laughs> and if you can draw a stick figure, then you can you can draw a, a person uh, in a position like this. That's what you start with. <laughs> anyway, if you start with the bone structure, uh, you draw a line from the head to the feet, line for the shoulders, line for the waist, and then going to fill in the bone structure. It makes things a whole lot easier when you are ready to go in there and start uh, creating some of the details here. All right, let me get my pencil a quick sharpen here. I think we've got time to do that. Yeah, we're only got 10 minutes here. <laughs> 10 minutes into this one. Yeah, and I think we're making good progress. But I always feel like this, especially in these with these getting sketchy episodes, where I feel like I'm making good progress. And I've got all the time in the world. And then all of a sudden the time runs out. All right, so I'm going to extend the arm out a little bit further here. And I'm just going to draw right over the top of what I've already got down. And we'll just draw another shape. I feel like the, the hand was a little bit close there. Just another shape for the hand. Doesn't have to be perfect. If you are creating a uh, more finished, more refined drawing, of course you take more time with this. We're just creating a quick sketch here. Don't put too much pressure on yourself. Clean up that line a little bit. And we have a little bit of shadow that happens here too. Not a little bit. There's a strong shadowed shape here. We kind of plan that out. And just quickly put a little indication of it. We'll go back and refine that in a minute, just like we did on the other arm here. All right, before we work down the body, um, let's go ahead and put... I'm going to go ahead and put a, uh, that logo here, or a little indication of it. And then maybe another indication of a logo over here. We won't make it exactly the same, no big deal. Give him his number, of course. We'll draw the rest of the fingers here while we're here. Just an, an indication of them. No, not a, not really detailed. Not too detailed at all. And then up here on the neck, we'll start to put some indications of the shadows. We've got a strong shadow that comes right across the bottom of the neck here. And it's really, we want to think about, again, just the shapes of the values up here. We don't want to worry about all the individual details. We want to think about the shapes of value. And if we get the shapes of value right, we're going to create an illusion here. So right up here on, along the side of the nose, we've got some darker shadow. There's a little bit of a lighter value right here on the cheek. But most of the face is in shadow here. And right underneath the bottom lip. And then right on the bottom of the chin there. There we go. And then we've got the hair that comes off. Just like that. 
A little indication of an ear over here. Still mostly in shadow. And then we'll do the, the same thing. Looking at the shapes of value over here. And this side of the face is mostly in light, but we still have some darker tones over here. So don't have to worry about the details. I mean, we don't, I mean, we're still, we're indicating the details, but we're implying them with the shadows and the darker tones. So the details will kind of, kind of emerge as we fill in the, the areas of value. All right, we'll go ahead and Fill in pretty much a dark shape for the hair. I know there's some highlights up here, and we'll, we'll let it let some of those highlights be visible there, I guess. And we're only 15 minutes into this one. I think this we're gonna get this one finished inside of 30 minutes, no problem. Sometimes we get them in and sometimes we don't. <laughs> Drawing is a skill that anyone can learn and develop and <clears throat> don't don't let anybody tell you any differently. Don't be one of those people who uh, who believe that you have to be talented in order to draw well uh, or paint well or any other type of, of art or really any other skill that you learn in life. Um, it all just requires a dedication to practicing and a desire to get better. And I'm, I truly believe that you can do anything that you want in life if you just accept that it's going to take some hard work and some commitment. And drawing is no different. And if you do this kind of thing every day, for just 30 minutes, you're gonna see incredible improvement. The thing is, people don't do this kind of thing every day. And the ones that do are the ones that improve and the ones that can draw well and enjoy drawing. All right, so I'm just filling in some of these darker tones. We'll make these darker if we have time. Um, because we're going to need to make some of the, we'll go ahead and fill in some of the values on the hand. We'll just work our way down because I think I've got, I think I've got enough time now to spend a little bit more time on these tones and values. Just like we did on the face, we're only going to concentrate on the shapes of value. And value, of course, is the darkness or lightness of a color. So we can see the shadow comes across here. So I'm just going to fill in that shadow. See that? See that shadow shape? Comes right across here. And then we've got another one of similar value right along the bottom side of the front part of the arm. I've seen so many students over the years <clears throat> who have started off um, and were not very skilled artists, and I've seen them create incredible works of art because they've practiced and they've put in the hard work. In fact, I had one student um, who was mediocre at best, and when when she graduated, she had an art exhibit at a local establishment. She went on, she majored in, in art. She ended up majoring in art. And she was not very good at the beginning. So if you ever get discouraged, just keep on plugging through. Take a break from it, but not a long break. And keep going. It just requires hard work, perseverance, in understanding that it is a skill. People aren't born with skills. They learn and develop them over time. And you can too. All 
All right, so I think we've <laughs> probably done enough work up here on the upper part of the body. Uh, we've got 10 minutes left, and I, I always do that. I always kind of get ahead and say, well, I've got plenty of time here. All right, so we know that the knee is right here, so we've got to let the, the shorts kind of come up here and over. And then we'll let that come down all the way down here. And foreshortening is where things get tricky. Whenever you have anything that sticks forward towards the viewer, that can be really tricky to handle, especially with the figure. It's um, a good way to think about foreshortening is, you know, you typically have something that comes forward. So in this case, we have the knee that comes forward, and this back part actually comes forward this knee comes forward so this part right here is shortened so that's how we can think about foreshortening that makes sense foreshortening and this part comes forward so this part gets shortened and we're gonna have to move the foot just a little bit so we'll just slide it over just a little bit not by much just a little tiny bit there. And then we've got some nice light here on the front side of the shoe, so we'll, we'll allow that to stay in light to keep our light source consistent. Just a few controlled, controlled marks down here, shapes of value again. Create that shadowed side of the shoe. And then there are some, a little bit of patterning and design over here. And of course we'll add the shoelace there. Maybe too big of a shoelace. <laughs> Alright, so we've got some shadow on this leg here. So I'm just kind of playing out the shape of it. And then start filling in this shadow. And there's a slight transition, but it's very slight. You've got strong contrast in this image, and usually strong contrast is produced when you have um, a strong light source. And usually, it's something like uh, if it's the if you're in harsh daylight, middle of the day, like we have here. And I'm going to just lightly erase the outer edge of this thigh here because we wouldn't see a real strong defined line there because the light's hitting it. So uh, if we have a strong defined line right there, then it will not look as natural as it couldn't be. So bring this up a little bit higher so we've got the little white section there. And you can see this is different. What I've got going on here is different uh, from what's happening in the in the reference, right in this area. But it should translate okay, we'll see. We have, you see that diagonal that happens that comes right across here? We'll try to capture that. And then we'll just go right up underneath here. There we go. That should translate okay, even though it's a little bit different. Remember, we're, we're always creating an illusion with drawings and paintings. And uh, as long as we create the illusion that's convincing to the viewer, that's really the only thing that matters, right? Okay, we're down, we're down to six minutes here. And all that talk, all the, I've been talking all this junk about, oh, man, we're going to make it, no problem. Oh, I always do that. <laughs> no problem. This is so easy. <laughs> and then I look up and see we're going to be close yet again. Yeah, I'm sorry. I see somebody made a comment there. He returns. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry I can't 
you know, I, I run the virtualinstructor.com and I'm always producing content for, for that site. And this, this will go on that site, of course. Um, but yeah, I spend a lot of time creating content for the members over there. And uh, that takes a lot of time. And also I have a very busy schedule on top of that. So I can't do the getting sketchy every week. I wish I could. But I try to do it whenever I can. I've been out of the country uh, for a little while and couldn't do it then. And then since I'm back, I'm trying to get caught up with everything, of course. But I'll do the getting sketchy as much as I possibly can because I really enjoy this. And I think, uh, I think a lot of you guys do too. So we'll draw a few indications of these wrinkles here and create a little bit of contrast in here and create a nice darker shadow underneath here. All right, so the second part of the shorts comes out right about here, and then let's see, where's that knee? This needs to be about right here. Let's let this come across about right there. There we go, that works. And then we've got darker value. See here I am looking at the shapes of darker value again. Mostly darker values over here, darker values under here. So we'll go ahead and just fill this in with some darker tone really quick. See that? And then it's a little bit lighter right here and then dark on the side. Kind of going right up the side there. So we don't have to get too concerned with the details because it's the value that usually does the hard work for us, right? Okay, a quick sharpen of the pencil. I, it's gonna be really tight here, guys. I, if, we, if I go over a little bit, I don't, I don't really think it's the end of the world. Sharpening the pencil shouldn't count as time, right? <laughs> All right, uh, let's see here. All right, so we're going to go ahead and bring the bottom part of the leg down here. And this leg does something kind of strange here. Comes in. Right down there, real close to the top part of the ball. It looks like it comes out. And it goes right back up there. Kind of, I think it's kind of strange down here what's happening. Maybe it's because the leg is just so strong. And it <laughs> I definitely don't look at legs this strong uh, when I look in the mirror. Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> All right, so... The bottom portion, the like the sock kind of comes out a little bit and then back in. If you want to exaggerate it a little bit, you can. And the majority of this bottom part of the leg is in shadow. There is an area of highlight right down here. So I'm going to kind of plan out where that highlight is. And then we'll fill in the darker tone and value. And it's slightly lighter than the shadow that happens on the shorts, so we'll keep it slightly lighter in our drawing too. So you see how we're creating the illusion of form? There just with the shapes of, of value. Now down here on the sock, dark right here. These are the things that you look for when you're creating the drawing. The shapes, the value, the lines, of course, and how you can create different textures here. So we'll create the texture of the socks here after we've established the value in place. Look at that, just like that. No problem, right? All right, now for the soccer ball. But before we do that, I'm just, I'm just killing me up here with the arm. I feel, like, <laughs> I feel like this needs to be just slightly darker. And 
I would love to work some of the contrast here a little bit further just on that hand because it's coming forward well not just on that hand over here too let's go ahead and let's go ahead and take care of this even if it pushes us over 30 minutes we're gonna be close enough to 30 minutes for it to count besides it was it was all about the player right not the not the actual soccer ball so if we look at it that way then we got it with 56 seconds to spare <laughs> although there's more there's more work we can do to the body up here that's you know this this jersey has some tone I'll go ahead and add that quickly as you can see I'm putting off the soccer ball I've always I've always had uh, problems with soccer balls again if you are outside of the United States I know it's a football <laughs> all right so uh, I'm going to go ahead and draw the circle here using my sketch, my loose sketch in place. I should have probably started up there. Even though I'm kind of refining the line here, I'm still drawing with several lines. All right, let's try to draw this pattern on here. And the tricky thing about the soccer balls is that they're round and they usually have some kind of geometric pattern on them like like where we see here that's not round and that creates distortion of course and you have to pay real close attention to what the lines are doing in order to create that illusion. Looks like our time is up, but I'll keep going because we're almost there. So again, this is just pure observational drawing. I'm just looking at where the lines are on the soccer ball and trying to place them on my soccer ball in the same location. No big deal. The thing is here not to rush it. Not to try to draw what you think should be there. And also give yourself the permission to be not perfect. You can't expect to be a perfectionist and an artist at the same time. You can strive for perfection, but you also have to realize that you're never going to get it. And you have to allow yourself to make, to, to make mistakes and sometimes allow those mistakes or those things what some people would consider mistakes to stay in the drawings. There's little imperfections. Of course, I'm talking about little imperfections. And this is this is probably one of the most complex soccer balls <laughs> I have ever seen in my life. This has triangles inside of hexagons and words and all kinds of shapes and all kinds of stuff. Looks like a little friend's trying to join me here, a little gnat or something. Of course, he's attracted to the whiteness of the paper. <laughs> uh, all right, let's see here. All right, let's add a little bit of shadow to this ball because right now it looks, I mean, it looks like a ball, but uh, it'll look more like a ball when we add a little bit of shadow. Our light source is coming from the left. 
So it looks like her value, her shading, I should say, is going to happen on the right side. Just give it a little impression that it is a sphere. Here we go. And then the last thing we'll do is we'll add just a bit of cast shadow. And of course, this is going to be at a diagonal. Make it more dynamic. And there we go. So uh, we can call this one finished. Um, so again, just to kind of review what we what we did, we started with a line from the head to the feet. Then we did drew lines for the shoulders, line for the waist. Then we went in and did the bone structure. So basically, um, we drew a stick figure by <laughs> drawing the bone structure. And then we went back and thickened things up um, by drawing the body and the arms and the head and just drew basic shapes for those things. And as we did so, we started thinking about the shapes of value. Value, of course, is the darkness or lightness of, co of a color. And in this case, we kind of ma mainly focused on the area of shadow, the, the darker values. And then we just drew in those shapes of darker value to help to create the illusion of a light source originating from the upper left-hand corner like we have within the scene. Now, there, of course, there's a bunch of lines still on here. There's loose edges and things. We can always go back and, and clean those things up uh, if we want to. But remember, this is this is just an exercise. It's just a meant, it's just meant to uh, improve your your, your drawing skills through practice. Every time you sketch, every time you create a drawing, even if it's a quick drawing like this, you are exercising those artistic muscles that are so valuable when you're, you're creating more refined and more finished drawings and paintings. Um, this one, of course, is not a refined drawing or painting, but it's uh, it's a quick sketch of a soccer or football player. All right, so I'm going to hide the reference now. And uh, as I mentioned before, I was going to show you what we're working on right now for our live lesson series. We haven't got very far with this one, but uh, what we're doing is an African or not an African elephant. This is an Asian elephant. Um, and here's a look at the reference that we're working from here. And this is on Stonehenge paper. Stonehenge paper is cotton paper, so it's very, very soft. Um, and we're going to be creating a drawing that's very similar to the, to the reference. We're going to create smooth gradations of tone and value. We're going to use blending stumps. Um, we're going to capture all the textures that happen on the elephant. Um, this is a slower process, of course. I use the grid technique to, uh, to plan out the image and draw the contours. This represents an hour's worth of work. So we're going to be continuing with this live lesson series tomorrow night over at thevirtualinstructor.com. Um, if you are a member, um, then I hope to see you there. If you're not, you can check out the program. Uh, it starts with a trial, a week-long trial for just a dollar. So you can go in and check out all of our courses, all of our live lessons, and all of that good stuff for a week uh, if you'd like. Now I'm going to go ahead and switch back to this camera over here and swing that big mic out of the way. Uh, so thank you guys for sticking around for tonight's uh, broadcast. I hope you had fun. I had fun. Um, and maybe you can go watch some of that World Cup action now. But hopefully you you complete this sketch and, and draw alongside of me. If you missed this live, or if you're watching this live, of course, you can always watch the replay. So the replay will be up uh, shortly after we're done broadcasting here. So I hope you guys have a wonderful week. I'll try to do this again next Wednesday night. If not, it'll be the Wednesday after that. So uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, sign out tonight. Good night, everybody.